caught in a snare. Father, we give you thanks for your word this morning. And we know that our Lord and Savior, he is the word. As you teach us, give us line upon line, precept upon precept, rightly dividing your word of truth in our hearts, in our minds. Give us your spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, the knowledge of your word, the knowledge of your kingdom, us and the kingdom of darkness that we may know, Father God, in the name of Jesus. En enlighten us this morning. Let your light illuminate us. Let your light shine bright. For it is in your light that we obtain knowledge. We get wisdom, understanding, and revelations of God. Enlighten us this morning. Illuminate us brighter. And when we leave out here, we leave out here with deeper deliverance, greater understanding, greater wisdom. And we thank you for feeding us bread, milk, meat, and strong meat for all that are in need this morning. All that are thirsty, Father God, quench our thirst and make us even more thirsty for the deepness of you and the deep things of you. That we live this life more abundantly and we live it in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. Caught in a snare, Ecclesiastes 9, read in verse 12. Ecclesiastes 9, read in verse 12. Ready, read. For man also know it. Amen. So are the sons of man snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. Snares to be caught or to catch, to entangle. So are the sons of man snared, entangled in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. So we as the saints of God, children of God, we must be sober and vigilant so that we are not caught up in an evil time. And it says, fall it upon them so that evil do not fall on us. We must be sober, we must be vigilant all the time. Let's go to Proverbs 12. Proverbs 12. Read in verses 13 through 15. Proverbs 12. Actually, just 13. 13 will work. Proverbs 12, read in verse 13. Ready, read. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. Amen. One more time. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. Amen. But the just or the righteous, those who live in a right and holy life before God, lifting up clean hands and pure heart, shall come out of trouble. And that means trouble can come? Yes. Trouble will come. So don't go crying when trouble come. You pick up your sword and say, let's go Jesus. Because troubles will come. See, we are deceived. Whenever we feel or think as though trouble ain't supposed to come. Trouble will come because we live in an evil world. The word of God says the whole world lied in wickedness. So if the whole world lied in wickedness, can we afford to come out of our home without our armor on? No. Cannot. And a lot of people are getting too busy and forgetting to put on the whole armor of God. So that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. A lot are being caught in snares because they're not paying attention. They're not being sober. They're not being vigilant. But we, as the children of God, the saints of God, must be wise and not foolish. Because we don't see evil. Don't mean evil is not present. 
Because we don't see evil don't mean evil is not present. So we cannot be deceived or be naive to think that we're going to live out every day sweet without fighting. Without picking up our swords. Without putting on the arm of God. Put on the helmet of salvation. So if you're not doing that, what, who's protecting your mind? Your soul. Who's doing it? Who, who, how are you putting it in? Who are you leaving it up to to protect you? As a child of God. Who? Our, ch- our parents did the best they, they, they could with what they knew. But a lot of our parents fall short or fell short in teaching us the word of God. And opening us and enlightening us up to truth. To fight. To fight. I went to school. And let me tell you something. I go out and fight because people were saying I, I could beat them. <laughs> I didn't go looking for fight. My family, some of them, siblings I grew up with, say, let's go, baby. You got to beat this one. You got to beat that one. I didn't go looking for trouble. Trouble came looking for me. I learned my lesson when I got beat up. That was one big and better than me. I say, no, no, no. This coming to an end today. See, we cannot allow the enemy to deceive us. To fool us, to lie, to trick us, to cause us to fall in the net. The devil will have us going and going and going and because we getting away with it, getting away with it today, this year, next year, five years. But when it come upon us suddenly, it was in the making for a very long time. And God is merciful and he is kind. But we have to be paying attention. So that it do not, evil do not come on us. It says, so are the sons of man snared in an evil time. When it falleth suddenly upon them. It is in the making. It is in the making. So by us being sober and vigilant, it says, but the just shall come out of trouble. But it's through us being Sober and vigilant, praying without ceasing. It's the reason why that is in the Bible, pray without ceasing. So we cannot, because we don't see evil today, see evil next month, see evil even mid-January, don't mean evil is not out there in the making. And so we cannot afford to be caught or catch or entangled in a snare. We cannot. I, I sympathize and I have love in my heart for everyone but ignorance is a serious thing yes. and I say this with all respect and I say this out of all the love in my heart when I see them with the little pink ribbons in support of breast cancer Come on. give a donation what am I donating to? the devil? To say it's okay to cut off your breasts and give God give you two, and you can cut them off so that so that you so that death don't come, but death already come when you come into agreement with it. We gotta be wise, sober, and vigilant. We gotta pay attention. We have to be sober and vigilant. Is not God power more greater than the devil's power? Did not our father give him the power he have? Right. Do not men in this earth turn around and give them their, him, their power? Of course. And this is what he's fighting us with today. The power that we turn over to him in ignorance. And some for money. For powers. So we cannot be caught in the snare. I don't subscribe to evil and to ignorance. So you never see me with a pink ribbon. I don't support it. What I do support is let's pray for them. Yes. Let's pray yes. that their eyes are open to what cancer really is. Yes. Cancer is a disease caused by sins and iniquities. It is brought on through sins and iniquities, all sicknesses. 
comes on a person or people or in a family because of sins and iniquities. And so we cannot be caught in a snare because we're not paying attention. And some do get to live more, uh, more years by having surgeries to remove this and to remove that out of their bodies. But the word of God says, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no healing with our Father? So we cannot be caught in a snare. It says, the wicked is snared by the transgressions of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. We are the just. And if you are the just, declare that no trouble will befall you because of who you serve, who you belong to. You are a child of the Most High God. You are a king in this earth, and you are a priest in this earth. That means you have the power to shut down all sickness, all the infirmities, and all diseases. It's on us. It's on us to not to accept what the devil dish out. Take nothing from the enemy's table. If you eat from his table, pay day is coming. For the wages of sin is death. And so when we participate in sins and iniquities, then payday is coming. Either you're going to lose in the body or outside of the body. Either through sickness in the body or you will lose things outside of the body. So we have to be paying attention and to not be caught in a snare. We have to be, as the word of God says in 1 Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter. First Peter 5, reading verse 8. 1 Peter 5, reading verse 8. Ready to read? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. One more time. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. So, Satan our adversary, the devil, is he sitting down? No. It says, he's walking about as a roaring lion, seeking or looking for who is open. Seeking or looking for who is open, who've left their soul open. Not taking the time and put on their armor of not taking the time to pray their armor on, of not taking the time to bind and to loose. These are the ones he's looking for, the ignorant souls, so that he can take their souls and sell them or cage them. So he is looking and he's walking about for the ones who are open, available to him. And so when he, when Satan come and bring someone your way and you fly off the handle and you start cussing them or you start fighting them or he bring a temptation your way and you fall to it you have been caught in a snare you've been trapped why? you took the bait of Satan he baited you and you eat the bait why? Either through ignorance, not knowing the word, not knowing that it's a trap, it's a setter from the enemy to open me up to commit sins and iniquity so that later he can come now and bring the curse. We have to know what we're doing every day. We have to understand that everything we do speaks for us or against us. Everything in this life we do speak for us or against us. Not only that, it is being recorded. Not only that, 
One day we'll be judged for it. So what do we do? What do we do as saints of God? Be sober, be vigilant, pray without ceasing, put on the whole arm of God, keep the commandments of God, live in Christ Jesus, walk in holiness, live a righteous life is what we do. Love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength is what we do. Loving us and our neighbors ourselves are what we do to keep the devil out. So that we are not caught in a snare in an evil time. So we have to do all that God has instructed us to do. Curses can only come if we sin. Curses can only come if it comes through sins and iniquities, through our bloodline, through our nation, or through territories that we are part of or through our own sins and iniquities is how curses come. And if we are not paying attention, if we're not being sober and vigilant and we take and eat from the enemy's table, Satan's table, any sin is eaten from Satan's table. Any, any breaking of the laws of God, not keeping his ordinances, his statutes, we are taking from the table of Satan himself. And so we cannot go to Satan's kingdom for anything. Everything that we need is in Christ and it is provided to us in God. So we should not be looking for anything from Satan because if we take anything from Satan, payday is coming. He's going to look for his pay. So we have to be sober, we have to be vigilant, we cannot be wicked says the wicked are snared by the transgression of his lips. So that means whatever come out of our lips, we cannot allow it to become sin. Death and life are well in the power of the tongue. Some of us, we fly off the handle too quickly. We don't care what we say if somebody hurt us. We just let it all out. When we do that, it says that we are snared by the transgressions of our lips. So what we do, Father God, put a watch over my mouth. Put a watch over my mouth, O oh God, that I do not transgress by the words that come out of my mouth. The word of God says, sweet and bitter water cannot come out of the same cistern. No blessing and curses should come of one mouth. So it's either we're blessing or we're cursing with our mouth. We cannot afford to open ourselves up to the enemy. Let's go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. We're going to read... Verses 10 through 18. Ephesians 6, reading verses 10 through 18. Ready, read? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, Having your minds heard about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet showed with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, 
and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching with all Amen. And so with us putting on this whole arm of God, it says that we may be able to withstand in the evil day. And it means they're going to be evil days? Yes, they're going to be evil days. So we don't wait until the evil day come upon us. We prepare and stay prepared so that when the evil day come, God delivers us. God delivers. God delivers. It says to be able to stand in the evil day and says having done all to stand. So we have to learn how to stand. We have to learn how to fight. I used to get knocked down plenty with the devil. The devil used to beat me up. Bad, bad, bad. Because I didn't know didn't have the knowledge, didn't have the understanding, didn't have the wisdom to apply the knowledge, didn't know. So I got plenty beat up. But I'm learning to fight, I'm learning to stand. And so in the mornings, before I do anything, I give God thanks, I sing him praises, I exalt his name. First thing in the morning, and they say 9 a.m., this is around 3, 4, sometime a little earlier. I give him thanks and praise. And then I pray on this whole armor. And I don't just say, Father, I put the whole armor of God on me. No. I go and I put on every piece. Because why? We are in a spiritual battle every single day. 12 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But yet we go and we won't fight people. Why are we fight people? We do not fight flesh and blood. And some of us, we can row. We got a filthy mouth. We got a mouth that want to hurt people and cut them deep. It's not right. It is Satan using your body. You have yielded your body to be used by the enemy. You are a servant of the devil. If you cannot control your body, the devil have control over you. And what we do? Pray. Pray, repent, ask God to help you get over that. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. This is a rank of demons, powerful demons, the most powerful ones, which are the fallen angels. The, the one third that fell with Lucifer, okay, these are those ones, principalities and powers, another rank against and powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Rulers is another rank. And spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, another rank. So there are different ranks in Satan's army as they are in God's army. And so God is saying to us, put on this armor so that whatever demon come your way, you'll be able to withstand. When the evil day come, you'll be able to withstand. Because why? We are the righteous. So the righteous just don't go to the house and say, oh, thank you, Jesus. And you ain't put your armor on. You're looking to be caught in a net, in a snare. So we have to make sure you make the time. Make the time. And this is a part of your everyday life. Sunday through Saturday. Sunday through Saturday, the first of the month to the end of the month, the beginning of the year till the end of the year, year one from your journey in Christ. As you get this revelation knowledge, do not stop doing what you're doing. You are building on your foundation. You are full in a house with the things of God so that when the enemy comes, he says, oh, I can't go back there. It have too much holiness in it. See, when we cast out demons out of our bodies, the word of God says when a house is swept and clean. This is what he's talking about. He's referring to our, our lives, our bodies. When we now don't fornicate anymore, when we now don't lie and steal like we used to, we are buying and cast out demons. What are they going to try to do? Come back. 
So what you fill it up with? The word of God. With good deeds. And say, I don't do that anymore. Amen. My body is now the temple of the most high God. Me and Jesus and I are one. I am one with his spirit. I am not one with that harlot spirit anymore. That whoredom spirit I used to have, I have separated and severed the soul of my soul against that. In the name of Jesus. You have to proclaim. You have to speak. Because I am not the whole. But I am the new in Christ. Yes. This is how we are not caught in a snare. Don't go and tiptoe around things you knew where you fall to. If you are strong today, that means you can be strong tomorrow. And so if you know you're not strong enough to go around that thing you left, don't go back around it. Amen. You're looking to be caught. You're strong today. Don't mean you could be strong tomorrow. And so we put on the whole arm of God that we are totally armored up. So if Satan try to attack the head, the feet, the loins, it is protected. We pick up the sword. We put on the helmet of salvation. You are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. It says praying always with all, praying always. And praying always mean that every single day we pray. It says pray. And when we pray, we don't pray our own prayers. We pray the, the scriptures. We allow the Holy Spirit now to pray through us. Prayers that come out of my mouth are not my prayers because I'm not going to try to pray for myself. I said, Holy Ghost, put the words, put the prayers, put the declarations in my mouth that you have me to pray, that you have me to declare. You have that power. He is waiting on you. He lives within you. When you became born again, you cast them old foul spirits out. And Holy Spirit came, who's our helper, to indwell. Our spirit is joined with Christ's spirit and we stay connected with him. We have been translated into the dear son of Jesus Christ, our, our Lord's son's kingdom. So we have been translated into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And this is where we stay. This is where we live in Christ and not outside of Christ so that we are not caught in a snare. It says, the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. So you're not looking for things to fall suddenly on you. So you stay armored up. You stay prayed and fast up. When, a, when it drops in your spirit to fast, you do a fast. God is strengthening your spirit, man. God is delivering you. God is helping you. This is the reason why we fast and pray. This is the reason why we fast and pray. Prayers is a time that we set with God. The wicked men that were trying to catch Daniel doing something wrong, going and cause the king to make it a creep. No one should bow and serve no other God other than his God. They knew Daniel's routine. They knew his routine. They knew he used to pray to his God. And so what they try to do, they try to catch him in a snare, in a trap. Try to entangle him to get rid of him. And Daniel only had one God because if he had fed the gods of the king, he would have bowed to the gods of the king. But he did what he always did. Open up his window, what is that? And he kneeled before his God and he prayed. Now I could paraphrase it, I could say what he said, what I could think he was saying. Man held with all of yours. This is my God, and I go serve my God because he's the only one keeping me safe down here. He is the one who brought me in this land and have kept me and promoted me and elevated me. In this land, I dare not bow to a demon. This is the same stand we have to take. Either for God we live or for God we die. There's no middle ground. Hot or cold. And there's only hot for Jesus. And we have to make up our minds that we're going to be hot for Jesus. If we are his children, he don't accept lukewarm. 
As a baby, you drink milk. As a toddler, you come off of milk. As an adult, you're on meat. As an older adult, you're on strong meat. These are the steps that we take as a child of God. You don't stay on milk unless something wrong with you. In this ministry, we don't stay on milk. You come here and you drink milk, but I can tell you one thing, you get off of milk very fast. You get off of milk very fast. You don't have a choice in here. The devil go run you. The devil go run you. So you get off of milk real fast. You learn to pray. You learn to put on your armor. Let me tell you something. There was a time Satan used to beat me dead bad. Before I was in my 30s, I want to say I might have been in my early 20s. I don't even think I was in my early 20s. I was in 20s. I was already in five car accidents. Satan trying to take my life. One that I'll never forget. You see those coconut trees? I don't know if you all remember them going up that hill on the post office downtown area. There's some very, very tall coconut trees. Man, they look like they're about at least 100 feet high. One coconut fall. It fell. And this man was in the back. I mean, he was, he was intoxicated. And let me tell you something. The coconut drop and touched the tip of my nose. Now, my nose ain't that long. It touched the tip of my nose. I was walking, going to the post office. And had that hit my head, my, that would have cracked my skull with the force that hit that ground with. The man in the back of me, all he said was, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I would never forget it. Jesus Christ! And he was a drunk man, because when I turn around and I look at him, I say, oh, he intoxicated. But he saw what almost happened. It hit the ground with such a force. And when I walk, and I was like, God. See whom God keep his well kept. Back then, I didn't know putting on no armor. He's a merciful God. And when you have destiny, as all of us in you have destiny, a destiny, he's going to try to stop it. If he can't kill you from an infant, he's going to continue to try to kill you until you learn how to fight in Christ. And God is so loving and he's so kind. When we drink milk, he protect us. When we eat bread, he protect us, but there's a time we have to eat meat and go to the enemy's camp so that we are not caught in the snare. Put on your whole armor and you take the time and you do it every single day. Be sober, be vigilant, pay attention to what's going on in your life. Pay attention to what you see. Pay attention because Satan is only looking for a green month. If you see something and it looks a little funny and you don't say, well, God, what that was, and you leave it, it's a green month. It's a green month. It's a green month. So we have to not be caught in a snare and we have to do what the word of God says. Let's look at Daniel 9. Turn to Daniel 9. Daniel 9, read in verse 11. Daniel 9. Read in verse 11. Ready? Read. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thine voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. One more time. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, 
that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Amen. It says, Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. The curse is poured upon us. Why? Because they transgressed the law that God gave to Moses. So curse is poured out on us whenever we transgress. Whenever we sin, curse is poured out upon us. So whenever we sin and we do not repent and ask forgiveness, and we keep com committing the same sins over and over and over, then it moves from sin to transgression because now we know what we're doing and we still refuse to stop. And it says, the curse is poured out upon us. So this is a warning to us, stay away from sin. Uh, if you don't, it says the curse will be poured upon us. So we as the children of God must know the law. We must know the ordinances. We must know the statutes of God so that we do not unknowingly be committing sin. When we hate, when we do not forgive, when we walk in bitterness and anger, when we keep talking and gossiping about people, when we keep sitting and judging them, well, I'm not like them and I don't do this, and I, we open up ourselves to sin, to Satan. We are eating from Satan's table because these are the things where God say for us not to do. And we only look, a lot of people want, tend to look at sexual sin the most. Sexual sin is the worst sin you want to commit because it says that every other sin is outside of your body. Sexual sins are sins done inside of your body. And so it says you sin against your own body when you commit sexual sins. Not only that, it opens you up for demons to enter. Because if you're committing sexual sins, whomever you could commit it with, you are becoming one with that person. Your soul is being joined with theirs. Your spirit is being joined with theirs. And so you don't want to do that. But every sin that we commit, we open ourselves up to be cursed later. This is God's words, this is his laws. And so we cannot be ignorant and not know the laws the precepts, the ordinances. When God, when Christ said that we must love our neighbors ourselves, he mean that. He mean that. When he say love you, he mean that. In other words, love you to stop sinning. Love you to, to make sure you're loving God. A lot of people do not love themselves. They, stay, they so easily surrender to people because they fear them. Or they are afraid that they're going to do this or take that from them. But we can't live that type of life. We can't afford to live like that. We have to live the way Christ lived and walked on this earth. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So we have to learn what Jesus did and do what he did. He, he healed. He preached. He taught people about God. He laid down his life, but he loved everyone. Everyone he loved. He loved everyone. And we have to get beyond this point of only loving a certain people, a certain set of people. And when somebody says something bad about us or lie on us, we're ready to get angry with them. Why are we allowing the enemy to use us like that? If we are going to be God, then God is love. And so if we say we love God, then let's mean we love God. And if we love God, we love people. Because say, how can we say we love God whom we've never seen and hate the ones who we do see? So he called us a liar. So we're lying when we say we love God and we out there hating people because of what they did to us. He say, pray for them, hey? Who use you? Who despitefully use you? Who hurt you? He say to pray. And so we cannot leave ourselves open and says, yay, all Israel have transgressed thy law. And so when we break the laws, when we do not keep the laws of God, the commandments of God, then we open ourselves up for curses to be poured out on us. 
And so we stuck in a position in life for many, many years. Some even go down in life because of the transgressions, because of the sins and not obeying God. So we have to learn to obey God. We have to listen to him and do what he said to do and stop wrestling with flesh and blood, fighting with flesh and blood. Flesh and blood is not the enemy. Flesh and blood is not our enemy. Satan, the ki- Satan and the kingdom of darkness have made themselves our enemies. And so we have to know how to fight. And we fight in God and not outside of God. We don't take up, we don't take up hatred and anger and fight the brethren and beat them down with words and say all kind of bad things about them and putting curses out there. We don't do that. We don't do that as a child of God. We don't do that. We don't go down that road again. See, we used to do that, but when we became born again, we don't do that anymore. The first thing is you say, Father God, bless them, and now God, show me how to pray for them. Did I open up a door to allow this to come to me? How is it that every time I turn around, someone trying to pull me back, someone trying to steal from me, someone trying to cause me not to be promoted? God, what is it? Have I opened a door? What is it that is causing me not to move in life? What is it causing me not to receive the blessings that you say I have gotten because I am a child of God? What is it that I am doing wrong? Have I opened the door? What is it that I have not confessed? What is it that I am still holding on to? These are the questions that we ask ourselves so that we can be delivered and set free. And so that we are not separated from God and that God will hear and answer us. It is that simple. We have to know God, we have to know his word, and we have to live by the word of God. And only the word of God, the word of God is Christ. And so if we're looking to grow in God, you have to open up the word. And you have to do the word. And so when God says, you know you're wrong, you go, go and tell that person, sorry, don't say the devil is a liar. <laughs> say, Father, I don't want to, but because you say, forgive them and bless them, I will go and forgive them. Help me not to call people my enemies. These are the prayers we put down. Help me to stop looking at people as my enemy. They're not my enemy. If Ephesians 6 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So if flesh and blood is not my enemy, show me my enemy so I can get him, the devil. That's how you have to go at it. What is on me that he keeps sending these people to me? What is on me, God? What does the devil have in me that is attracting him to pour on curses on me? What is it, oh God? See, stop looking at people. Address you. Address you. Because if you happen to always be getting targeted, why are you being targeted? Why? Why? God, why? Show me what's going on. And let us not look at people as the enemy. Let's go to Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. Read in verse 9. I get that right. I think that right. Thirteen. Thirteen? Let me see. I want the one. Yeah, that's it. Nine. Thank you. Yeah. Proverbs nine. Yes. Proverbs eleven nine. Ready? Read. And hypocrite with his mouth destroy his neighbor, but through knowledge shall the just be delivered. One more time. And hypocrite with his mouth. Destroy his neighbor, but through knowledge shall it just be So, you see what the word of God says first? A hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. So he calls a hypocrite whenever we rise up against anybody. He calls us a hypocrite. And so when we take that bait now, Satan now uses it against us. We've eaten from Satan's table. But it says, but through knowledge, knowledge knowing that, look here. People are not my enemy. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. 
And so now you don't sit down and get no conversation with hurt people. Hurt people, hurt people. Right. So when they hurt the voice, you say, hold on, let's pray. Let's pray. Save you. Oh, hold on, I can call you right back because some of them you can't get away. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I call you right back, I call you right back. Say, God, please save me. Please save me. Because Satan will bring people to you. Because, see, you know the word now, you know we cannot be engaging in, in gossiping, in slander, and accusing the brethren, pulling down people, in other words. Satan, go know. He's already, he already know how you know the word. So the same thing you've learned, he's going to use somebody else to get you. So do not fall into these traps, these snares that Satan sent. We must be sober and vigilant. We must see when the devil come. So that before he get to you, say, Satan, I bind you. You will not open your mouth and speak no gossip in here today. So if that's your friend, and you know how that friend is, and how that friend go, you want to make sure, bind that spirit of gossip, slander, envy, jealousy that coming out of their mouth or you say father god i tie praying this prayer man scatter them scatter them scatter them scatter them some people need to be scattered from your life because of the demons that they entertain because of the demons they entertain you can't afford to be in that place scatter them say father god anybody who's in my life and you ain't send them there who is purpose driven by the devil remove them scatter them in jesus name you want to take authority. You don't sit back like a little lamb and just get beat up. Your savior is a king. Your savior is the lion of Judah. Get in him. Get in him so that you take on his character of love and being powerful and a sound mind. So that you know how to fight. And before they get there, you already dealt with that because why? You took the time first thing in the morning and bind up that demon. You don't wait until it come on you and say, Jesus, what I get myself into. No. You take charge of your day before your day, before you even come with your home. You ch take charge and you say, God, I command this day to be such and such. I close the door on such and such. It's on you. It's on us. It says, but through knowledge shall it just be delivered. It's time for us to be delivered. We need deeper deliverance. This day refuse to let people jump on you. To change who you are. This day be determined to get up first thing in the morning and command your day. Giving God praise and thanks before something good come your way. And they say, oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. No, you thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, before you come out. So that you open up the airways by your praise and your worship to God. You scatter the enemy, in other words, by your praise and worship. The devil don't want to hear you praise and worship in your God. And so don't keep your mouth closed. Don't keep your mouth closed. There are times I don't want to lift my hands and minutes like that. I stretch them all the way up. I don't do this. God, Jesus. I blow kisses. He's my God. He's my father. He's my provider. If I can't do that, who am I? How am I gonna how am I gonna be a child of God if I can't reverence him here on the earth? Who am I? Um, do I have him in hiding? Am I one of them secret Christians? Don't want nobody to know you're safe? No. Now I am walking around with no big Bible in my heart. <laughs> I ain't doing that. First of all, thank you, Jesus. First of all, thank you, Jesus. I ain't doing that. But let me tell you where I have this Bible. I have this in my heart. It's in my heart. So that when people speak to me, the Bible comes out. Christ comes out. He is my, he is my glory. He is my hope. He is my confidence. He is the love of my life. He is the one I come to when I'm in need. He is the one I come to when I hurt. He is the one who can heal me. He is the one when I get tired, I say strengthen me. He is the one that I depend on. Don't depend on man anymore. I don't depend on self anymore. I don't depend on self. I say, Father, if you don't bring it, it ain't coming. If you don't give it, I ain't getting it. If you ain't giving it, I ain't taking it. We have to know that God isn't just a God in word. 
He's a being, he's a supernatural being that fills the earth. Loves us so much that he made this for us. This earth was not made by it for the devil. It was made for man, for us. You take authority over it and you say, Satan, get out of my life. Get out of this world. That's right. Get mad with him. Get tired of him. In the name of Jesus. And so it says, through knowledge, the just shall be delivered. But it says, a hypocrite with his mouth destroyed his neighbor. Let's not be a hypocrite anymore destroying our neighbors. By destroying our neighbors, we also destroy ourselves. And so curses are poured out on us because we are breaking the laws, the precepts, the ordinance of the Most High who have given it for us to keep. Let's go to Isaiah 59. Read in verse 2. Isaiah 59, read in verse 2. Ready, read? But your iniquities are separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. One more time. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. So when we are not hearing our, not seeing our prayers answered, you have to go back and say, now, Father, is there any iniquities that's coming between me and you that you do not hear me when I pray? Because if you're praying, your prayers will be answered. If you are the just, if you are living a holy, clean life, your prayer is supposed to be answered. It says, but your iniquities, these are the repeated sins that we do over and over, knowing this is a, all right, let me give an example of what this iniquity is. For some people out there as Christians, they lie every day and they know they're telling a lie. They steal every day and they know they're stealing time when they overspend their lunch break, when they go on the phone and they gossip and they talk. Gossiping every single day, judging every single day is no longer a sin, it's now iniquity because it's something you're doing knowing you're not supposed to do it. So don't just look at the sexual sin. Fornication, if you're committing fornication every day, um, it's to the place where it don't move you, then it's no longer a sin, it's iniquity. It has been elevated, it's been bumped up. So when we allow sin and iniquities to reign in our lives and without remorse, without repentance, without a broken heart, coming before God and repenting, then it remains in place. And then our prayers are not answered. He don't hear us because why it have separated between us and God that he do not hear us when we pray when we ask so this we have to make sure we fix this before we go in prayer before God I, I, I confess my sins all the time I before I start any prayer the first thing I do is father God search my heart if there is any wicked way in me Reveal to me, show me, Father, search my heart. Because some of us could be sinning unknowingly. You might be committing a sin unknowingly. Why? Because you're not familiar with the word or you're not sure that what the ordinance are or you're not, uh, you don't know all the laws that speaks against us sin. And so if we are sinning every day, the word of God says must, we must repent. And so, Father, search my heart. If there's any sin, if there's any iniquity in me revealed to me, that I may confess and repent them. The only way you get to know is by the Holy Spirit bringing it to your remembrance, to your attention. And you say, Father, if I sin or if I am sinning unknowingly, show me. Show me means whenever, I'm, whenever I get there to do it, show me so that I don't do it. And the Holy Spirit will help us. This is how he help us by us asking. And so my prayer is, Father God, show me. If there's any sin, any iniquity in my heart, reveal to me, show me. Because if there are unknown sins to us that have become iniquity, then Satan is using that against us. Sin that is not repented, iniquities that have not been confessed and repented, keeps curses on us. And so we have to know what it is we're doing every day so that we stay out of sin and we stay out of 
the camp or out of the kingdom of darkness. And the only way to stay out of there is to know the word of God, to know the laws, the ordinances, the precepts. Fair. Fair. To how fair is sin. The fearful will not inherit the kingdom of God. Fear is a spirit and it's not a spirit from God. He said he did not give you a spirit of fear. And so if you have a spirit of fear, you have sin in your life. That, that fear that Job had caused sin or caused a curse to be poured out on him. Because he feared, it says, one thing he feared have come upon him. He feared losing his children. He feared losing his health. He feared losing his wealth. And he lost them all because of fear. And so we have to repent for having fear. And allowing fear to control our lives. Being afraid. Fear. And so we have to address fear. Fear. Get rid of fear. Confess your affairs to God and say, Father, I am afraid. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. Address fear. Get rid of fear. Fear opens the door to death. Fear opens the door to the spirit of death. Job feared losing his children. Ten dead one day. One blow from the enemy. The evil day came on him suddenly because of fear. His ten sons and his three daughters go all in one day because of fear. Fear opened the door to death. And so get rid of fear. Get rid of fear. It destroys. We cannot sit back and allow sins and iniquities to continue to stay in our lives. By keeping them in our lives, we are disconnected from God. And so we pray, and now I lay me down to sleep. Don't pray loud, now I lay me down to the sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep as a child's prayer. You teach that to your little babies. But you, as a grown adult, you pray and you learn to pray. By God, let the Holy Spirit teach you how to pray. Man, it didn't teach me to pray. God taught me how to pray. And so the prayers you see coming on my mouth and on my prayers, they're God's prayers. We need prayers that will move mountains. We need prayers that will bind the devil. We need prayers that will make a difference in our lives. We need prayers that we can live by and on. And we learn them through Holy Spirit. And so God taught me how to pray. Man didn't taught me how to pray. God did. And so you learn to pray on your knees, in your bed, talking to God. Holy Spirit will teach you. If you want him to. He is our counselor, our helper. He is the one that indwells us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are in God. And he is in us. And so we have all the help we need. But we cannot allow that lazy spirit to come on us to where we just sleep. Or we just read one verse, one chapter, and that's us for the day. That's child's play. That's child's play. If you've been in God a year, you, you're beyond that now. And so let's get serious because Satan is serious. It says he walk around like a roaring lion, not a little cat, seeking whom he may devour. He is out to devour. And so we cannot be on milk and bread forever. We have to take our own spiritual growth in our hands and not be caught in the stair sleeping because an evil time is coming. It says, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth upon him suddenly. But we have to realize that we have a God that loves us and we must pray, Father, teach my hands to warn my fingers to fight. It says, God is a God of war. God is a God of war. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violence take it by force. You are a soldier in the Lord's army. All of this is showing us we're supposed to be fighting. We cannot sit back and let the enemy keep advancing. And he's advancing when the children of God sleep in. When the church sleep in, he's advancing. 
can't allow him to advance in our lives. We can't allow him to advance in our nation. We stop him. And we stop him through prayer. We stop him through repentance. We, we stop him through confessions of those who commit sins and iniquities in our land. Defiling the land. If the land is defiled, it will do what? Spew us out. And so we pray for the least. The word of God say, pray for those that are in authority. So that there may be peace in the land. And so we cannot not be praying for our land, for our leaders. We pray for them. And we pull down, so that we pull down the strongholds in our enemy, in our, in our nation, sorry. Our nation need healing. Our nation need cleansing. There's no way we should all them made us in this one week. There's no way that should have happened. But true Christians, if we're in on the wall and standing in the gap, it should not be happening. And so we cannot be taking this walk light. Cannot. It's not coming to our door and we give God thanks, but we need to keep it out of our nation now. We have to get serious. We cannot sit back and be destroyed. Let's go to Hosea 4. Hosea 4. Read in verse 6. Hosea 4, 6. Ready, read. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt know seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Amen. My people, that means the Christians, the saints of God, the children of God, my children. My sons are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. When God gives you knowledge, don't reject it. Some churches, they scared if they, they scared if someone say witchcraft. They run through the door. And some, oh, I don't believe in that foolishness. It's foolishness, eh? So you're calling the Bible foolishness. He said, because you have rejected knowledge. The body of Christ have rejected knowledge. And so what they do, they are destroyed because they lack it and they reject it. You can't reject knowledge. The word of God said, beware of witchcraft. Witchcraft. The word of God said, rebellion is as witchcraft. Because thou have reject, has rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. That you shall no longer be a priest to me. But who are we? priests and kings of God that you will no more be a priest to me seeing you have forgotten the law of my God which is our God if you forget his law he said I will forget your children I will forget your children are we praying to keep the children how do children safe if we're not, if we're not doing what we're supposed to do Father God keep my children safe but you're doing what you're supposed to do he said the seed of the righteous shall be safe that's our children. But if we're rejecting the knowledge, we're not applying it every day. And we allow the enemy to say our mind against the word of God, the true word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that have delivered us and set us free, we'll forever be bound. We'll forever be caught in the snare. They wanted to know where Jesus came. I said, what man of man is this that he even the see and the wind listen to him? That same man of man live in you and me. Start speaking to the wind. Start speaking to the sea. You do it. Because Christ in you is the one who's doing it through you. Put your hand on your body and say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus who healed is in you. That same power he used from God Almighty, his father, your father, is in you. Put your hand on yourself and say, there is balm in Gilead. The stripes of Jesus have healed me and made me whole. I take my full healing and deliverance in Christ. And you walk in it. See, we have to stop playing. Cannot reject this knowledge. We cannot fear Satan. Because if we fear Satan, and we don't fear God, then something wrong. See, we fear what we tend to see. But you got to realize what we see came of what we don't see. 
So what, what you don't see is more powerful than what you see. So if you look in the mirror and you see something wrong, you don't let your heart um, be overwhelmed and say, oh God, I was in there yesterday. Say and get out. This is the temple of the Most High God. Get out, get out, get out. In the name of Jesus. Take authority. You have been given power and authority in Christ. Exercise it. Don't allow fear to make Satan more powerful than God. Don't allow fear to make God smaller than Satan. This is what Christians do all the time when they bow to the enemy. So don't listen to him. Don't listen to Satan. The word of God is what strengthens us and delivers us and set us free. Let's go to Galatians 3. Galatians 3. Read in verses 13 and 14. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Three, thirteen, and 14. Ready to read? Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is every one that hanging on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. So through Jesus Christ we have been redeemed from the curse. So, the curse is poured out on us when we transgress the laws. When we don't keep the ordinances, the precepts that Christ told us to keep, that God told us to keep. Then we come under a curse. When we repent and confess our sins, Jesus' blood redeems us from the curse of the law. So, as children of God, we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Because Jesus Christ took all of our sins and all the iniquities that brought the curse on us. And he gave us a new life. We became born again. So our spirit, our soul are no longer the devil own. We have been born again. We have been born again. Our spirit was born again. And so we are new creature in Christ. So we have to stay out of sin, stay out of iniquity, stop transgressing so that we get to live and receive all that God has given to us. And it says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. So the blessings that we're looking for only comes through Jesus Christ. And so it's in Christ that we live, we move, have our being. It says in God. We live and, and move and have our being or our existence in God. As Christians, we cannot live outside of God. Jesus says in John 9, 10, 9, that he is the door. So we have to live in him. He is our, he is the door. And whoever finds, whoever enters in will be saved. It's the only way. And so today, make up your mind to walk this walk in Christ. To stay in God, stay forgiving, stay ever learning, stay growing in God, stay wanting God, stay in love with God, stay confessing the love of God, stay reading and studying. Do not come outside of Christ. Keep your armor on so that you're not caught in a snare. Watch your mouth. Ask God to watch your mouth. So that would come out, do not snare you. Would come out, do not cause you to fall to sin. Watch your mouth. Watch who you stay around with. Around. Watch what you listen to. Because your air are gates. Your eyes are gates. And whatever come in enters you. And so you have to watch. Be careful that you're not snared by what you hear. What you listen to. Some things sound real good until you're caught. Ask God to close them to the enemy. Your mind has to be protected. This is why you put on the salvation, that helmet to protect your mind, your soul, your soul, which is your mind, your will, your intellect. Satan is not playing. And so we cannot play. 
And the body of Christ need to wake up to reality and to truth who Jesus is and what he came to do. God put us here for his glory. He made this world for us, not for the devil. And if we could not overcome him in Christ, he would have never put him here. So we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. But know that you have overcome in Christ. And do not bow to the enemy. Get up and fight. If he knock you down once, get back up. I see you get me today, but you don't get me tomorrow. Amen. But you have to be determined to fight. You have to fight. Fight sleep. Fight being lazy. Fight being busy. Some people can't stay still. Can't stay still. They always got to be busy, 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 busy. You know, that's a spirit, right? It's a spirit. And if you one of them, you always have to be doing something, something wrong, you better call that demon out. Get him out of you so you can spend time with God. If you can't keep still, how are you going to grow in God? Oh, let's go, let's go. Oh, I can't keep still. Why? You better get that devil off of you. Get him off. Say, where you going? Where you going? Oh, no, no, no. I got to go. I got to go. No, you need to go. You need to sit still. You need to sit still and grow in God. Some of us too busy for our own good. Well, well, you know, by the spirit of your brow, you can eat bread. You better stop that. You're going to eat bread and dead? Father, thank you. Lord, we give you thanks. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. It is in Christ Jesus that we have the blessings. It is in Christ Jesus that we have the blessings. We are working for these blessings, but it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these blessed, these things shall be added unto you. We are trying to add these things in our own strength and be getting tired as they go by. Turn it over to Jesus. He said, cast your cares on him because he cares for us. Cast everything. Just give it to him. He got me to a place. Let me tell you something. I had a plan for my life. My plan was to retire by 50, 55 and travel the world. I was like, I love to travel. I love to see new things. I love adventures. And that was my plan. And so I went about hard. Hard at my plans. And I was looking for no one to help me with this plan. I planned it and I knew exactly I was going to reach that goal. So I was doing real good. I got me two pieces of property, started to build one, the one's a, a fourplex. And the plan was to build apartments so that when I retire, I have income. Not to repent on, not to repent, not to depend on pension but to have the monies in place so that I could travel and I was retiring at 50 55 the, the, the youngest because why I wait until I get 65 to go in a rocking chair <laughs> so that was my plan and I was real busy and I was getting there getting there getting there getting there getting there and the God gripped me <laughs> he had me a long time as a, as a teenager he had me from before teenager he had me and I gave my life um, from 1989, I gave my life to Christ. But that was my plan. That wasn't his plan for my life. And I went hard at it. I was getting there. Stone going to tell you. Until he slowed me down one day. And he said, see, this is why you got to watch what come with your mouth. I said, God, I belong to you. I'm yours. And he said, I want you to stop working overtime. Now, we got paid bi-weekly. So it was every two weeks was paid. 40, 40 hours a week, uh, I was a full-timer, and so 80 hours every two, two weeks or bi-weekly. But that, two, that 80 hours used to be 120 plus hours in two weeks. So I worked, and my overtime was more than what my, not my, my regular pay was. So I was doubling up so I could do what I needed to do. And so he said, stop working overtime. But let me tell you, you get me. He tell me to give my vehicle to one of my nieces. That was paid off. My plan was once that paid off, that money was going there, 
I could start to put on the top of my duplex. And so when that, when that was paid off, he said, I want you to give that to your niece. So I said, okay. Long story short, it took almost a year to give it to her, but I had to go through a lesson to, to, to lose that car. <laughs> the lesson was, she didn't have a license, so I said, I can drive this, so she get a license. Now, I know she wasn't trying to pursue no license, so far as I can say, I can keep this car for a little longer. God said, he shut it down. So you gotta listen to God. He shut down the car, wasn't working, cut down on me a couple times, spending money fixing this and fixing that. Finally, I said, mechanic said, hey, I ain't no wrong with this, ain't nothing wrong with it. But we wait for the mechanic, but I get it cut off with me. I finally got frustrated, going to God. I said, God, what's wrong with this car? He said, nothing. <laughs> he said, I told you to give that to your niece. You decide, you gonna keep it till she get a license. Jesus. So finally, after I got that lecture, she said, I'll go and get something you like. Pick up what you like. I'll go on, pick up something. i pick out something. Not what I like. I look at the price. <laughs> Going back to God, tell you, God, just pay attention. Do what he tell you to do. Don't go through these lessons. Don't go through these. Go on, I said, okay, God, I find what I like. He said, no. You look at the price. You like the price. The price is $18,000. <laughs> it was a double cab truck. <laughs> On a white one. So, you know, it was just basic. I didn't want another loan. I didn't want to go through the bank. I didn't want to do that. And so he said, no, you, you look at the price. You like the price. So he said, tomorrow, you go and you pick up what you like. And I know the difference when he's serious. And I know when he is educated. And I know when he's loving. I know when he's disciplining. I left work early that day. I asked if I could leave early because I dare not go before God again and didn't have what I liked. When I walked down to one showcase and the one I saw was a beautiful, beautiful SUV, $42,000. I was like, God. <laughs> but that's what I like. So, lady said, can I help you? I said, mm, just give me a, could I get a quote for this please? Just write me up something for the bike. So she said, well, you don't want to say, I said, no, I ain't need to see it. <laughs> I didn't see enough. This is, I like this one. I love this one. Let me get this one. Take it before God. He said, okay, now take it to XYZ. Tuck it in that. Go on in the bank because you're already familiar with everybody. You work around the bank. You work around the airport where the bank was. And so everybody get to know you. And so I went there. I said, Miss Collie, what you need? I said, give him, I give him the paper. He said, oh, we can get you in this before the end of the month, before the end of the week. He said, I'm coming right back. He go and get approval. Come back, stop. says, oh, you straight. I went to the office and I was depressed. You would think he tell me no, and I needed this desperately bad. I was all I saw. By this time, they gave me a discount, so it brought it down to like forty thousand. All I saw was the payment. Yeah. I just saw this big forty, and I was like, I can't believe I did this. <laughs> but God know your thoughts, so you don't have to speak it out. So He got me with that in February of twenty ten. In August 2010, I got a mortgage now. Now I have a car loan. I was able to get it because of all of the overtime. And so my, my salary was high. And then I had other incomes because the front I was bringing in rent. So I, I was good. Until God said, stop working overtime. I said, well, now, God, I did this. It can't go. You're telling me this. You can tell me, take out a car loan. You can tell me, stop taking over time, and I make more money in the overtime than I make. I said, God? It's like, who I listening to? Who this ass talking to me? Who this ass? It's a car be God. I said, God, you tell me get a car. And then the money would pay for the car. You tell me, stop it. I said, the same right back. I said, it's so hard. So, I said, I know about that. So go on, I remember when, I don't know if I answered him that day, but he come back again, and he trust me, keep coming back. He come back, he said, I want you to stop working overtime. And I want you to stop picking up extra shifts. You could have worked for people, what he called change of shift. And so on my days off, look at this, pay me the weekday shift, and I got paid for the shift. So I, I knew how to make money. And I had good days off, so the good days off was always in high demand. They give me $50, $100 a weekday shift, and I get paid to weekday shift. So it was, it was a good deal. So God come back, God, and I had figured out, I said, I can pay this off, I, I can pay this off quick. And Holy Spirit shut me right down. He said, okay, 
Don't pick up no overtime. Give me till December. We say, now come January. If you don't see a difference, you can go back on overtime. Now, based in August now. So I count the months. I say, okay, I can do that. So, okay, God, I'll do that. Let me tell you something. August, September, October, I can't, I don't remember. I held my breath. Sometimes I, I felt like I was going to pass out. <laughs> the bank started calling for the mortgage because the, the bank was connected, my, my, my salary was connected to the bank with the vehicle and not the bank with the mortgage. The people in the front was a church and they wasn't bringing in enough. So I wasn't collecting no rent. I was like, go, I look here, when I say I couldn't move, I couldn't look to the left, I couldn't, one song saved me and kept me saying, the Lord will make a way somehow. Amen. I went to work singing that song, I went to sleep singing that song, I woke up singing that song, that carried me for months. I couldn't wait for December to come. I prayed and couldn't wait for December. When December 31st come, I say, thank you, Lord, it finished. January come, I pick up nothing. I say, now I'm free. I can go back. But I ain't pick up no shift. I say, I would be a fool if I go back and pick up another shift. If God brought me through all of this, rewrite the mortgage. The bank, the, the bank the, used to call me and say, you got to make your mortgage payment. I said, God would be doing. He ain't answering. He ain't saying nothing. Let me tell you something. I was in a place that I wouldn't want my enemy to be in. Trusting God. When you say you belong to God, you will be tested. Your faithfulness will be tested. Abraham's faithfulness was tested when he, God said, give me your son that you love. Abraham's faith was tested. The love for his God was tested. And he passed the test because he was willing to sacrifice his son to the God whom he loved. If you say you love God, truly love him, he will bring you through everything. Long story short, I never went back to overtime. That was in 2010. I retired at 55. He told me put it in my letter at 55. And he brought it back to me. I said, God, I really did. I spoke it. I said, be careful what you speak. I did retire at that age. I spoke that. But I spoke what had my own plans, but they were my spoken words. So at the age of 55, I put in my retirement letter. My birthday was in May 16th, and I retired the 1st of June. That made me 50 cents. Be careful what you say. Don't be caught by your words. Don't let your words cause you to transgress. And I never pick up another open shift. I worked and I kept that 40 hours was sufficient. God, I don't know how he did it to this day. I still don't know him. I've retired. And I don't know how he's paying the bills. I can't tell you how the light is staying on today. I can't tell you how our food is on the table today. I don't, I'm working for God. I can't tell you, but I can tell you this. I am happy. I'm at peace. I'm in love with my God. And I've surrendered my all to him. And I keep nothing back from him. And if you want that life of peace and joy and a sound mind, you have to give it to God. Keep nothing from him. Because if you keep it from him, you're turning it over to Satan. And so you don't want to be caught in the snare. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your word this morning. Mighty God, everlasting Father, our Prince of Peace. Our Jehovah, our Jehovah Jireh. Our High Priest. Our King, our Lord. Our Emmanuel. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, our Redeemer our Savior, the Savior of the whole world. We give you thanks this morning. And Lord, if we are caught in a snare, unknowingly, Holy Spirit reveal to us, show us how we are caught. In the name of Jesus, if our sins, our transgressions, have gotten between you and us, that you do not hear us, Lord, show us, show us our transgressions, O God, in the name of Jesus. Show us, Father God, that we may be healed, delivered, and set free. That we do not fall in the time of evil. In the name of Jesus. Lord, if we have not been sober and vigilant, Lord, if we have not praying, Father God, always, or praying without ceasing, Lord, we repent. Show us how to pray without ceasing. 
And if we've not been loving you a lot, or if we don't love you all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, Lord, we repent, forgive us. If we do not love ourselves or love our neighbors ourselves, Father God, forgive us. For these are the greatest commandments that Jesus said that the, all of the commandments hang, hangs on these two. That we must love you all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength and love our neighbors ourselves. Teach us how to love, Father God. Take hate, take bitterness, take anger, Father God. Take out all evil emotions, Father God, of revenge out of our hearts. Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we leave revenge to you. Help us, O oh God, not to see flesh and blood as enemies for you said we wrestle not against flesh and blood let us stop making man people our enemies for they are not our enemies not if you say we must pray for them that hurt us that despitefully use us so teach us oh god how to forgive and how to pray for them that try to use us or to hurt us father god if we've opened up our hearts and soul to the devil father god we repent if we've watched father god Things, Father God, and programs, and listen to things and programs that we're not supposed to. We're caught, Father God, and, we've, and we are in transgression. Lord, we repent. Forgive us, Father God. Be the watchman, Father God. Watch our mouth, Father God. Put a watch over our mouth that we watch would come out of our mouth, Father, in the name of Jesus. Cover and protect us, Father God. Who heal our soul from all wounds, Father God. If our souls are in case today, Show us how, Father God, that we may repent and confess. Father, the day, Father God, will be released today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Teach us, Father God, to use the weapons, Father God, that you've given to us and made available for the body of Christ. And teach us how to warfare correctly, Father, in the name of Jesus. Teach our hands to fight and uh, teach our hands to warn our fingers to fight, Father God. Teach us how to pick up our cross daily and run half, half, hard after you. For Jesus say it. That we must deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him. And they who do not do it is not worthy of him. So God, we repent, Father God, for all the times we did not pick up our cross and follow you. Lord, we repent, Father God. Show us, Father God, when we put it down. Show us, God, when we didn't pick it up. And show us, God, how to lift and to carry this cross, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Teach us how to win souls for God. You say, he who wins souls are wise. So teach us how to win souls, Father God. Teach us how to grow, Father God, the kingdom of heaven. Teach us how to be ambassadors in the earth for you, Father God, to bring an influence of the kingdom of God in this earth. So teach us about the kingdom of, of, of heaven, the kingdom of God, that we may bring an influence in this earth, Father God. Teach us to pray for our nations, the leaders in our nations, in our nations, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Teach us, O oh God, how to love with the love, Father God, that Jesus had and showed and displayed in this earth, that when he went on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. So teach us, O oh God, that though they crucify us, though they try to slay us, Father God, teach us how to forgive them. Father, in the name of Jesus. They lied on Christ, they will lie on us. So teach us, O oh God, not to take offense, not to be offended, Father God, when someone tried to hurt us, to use us to lie on us, Father God. Teach us, Father God, not to live a life being offended. Father, in the name of Jesus, teach us, O oh God, how to surrender our will to you, to surrender our lives to you, and to hold nothing from you, to keep nothing from you. Our father Abraham sacrificed Isaac, only you stopped him, because you saw his faithfulness, the love, Father God, that he had for you. Teach us, O oh God, to keep nothing from you, to hold nothing back from you, but Father God, to surrender our will, our lives to you totally. Father, in the name of Jesus, for God, you say, he who loses his life will, will gain it. And so, Father God, teach us, O oh God, how to have our lives, Father God. For your words say, what, what, profit, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his one soul? Or what will he trade his soul for? God, if we've traded our soul, Father God, for the things of this world, Lord, we repent. Forgive us, Father God. Show us, Father God, that we may, Father God, repent and give you our souls to keep. Because, God, if you don't have it, then that means Satan, the enemy, have it. And, Lord, we repent this day, Father God, for we are your children. Teach us, O oh God, how to do what you have us to do in this earth. As we surrender our will, Father God, teach us, O oh God, not to be afraid. As I bind that spirit of fear out of us now and say, come up with all your roots in the name of Jesus. Give us your peace. Give us your love, Father God. Place them in our heart. The peace that Christ gave to us, Father God, we thank you for it. We say, this peace I leave you, I give you, not as the world give. But so God, we thank you for giving us the peace that Christ has given to us. And God, let us hold on to it. Teach us how to love and to enjoy life. Teach us how to reign, Father God, and have dominion in the earth 
over the works of your hands, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So that when we speak to the mountain, the mountain is removed. When we speak, Father God, to the sea, it is stilled, Father God. When we speak to the wind, Father God, it comes calm. Father God, teach us, O oh God, how to speak and to keep on speaking, thus saith the Lord, Father God, and keeping Satan on our feet where our Lord and Savior has placed him, Father God. He has given us power and authority over all the power of the enemy, which is Satan and the kingdom of darkness. Teach us not to fear the kingdom of darkness, not to fear Satan, Father God, but to fear you with holy fear. Father God, who can destroy the soul and the spirit? Teach us, O oh God, to fear you, to honor you, to revere you, to love you passionately, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Teach us, Father God, how to want to sit with you and to learn, to be taught the true word of God, Father God, and not to listen to false doctrines and dogmas, Father God, it will send us to hell, but to, Father God, to get the truth and sell it not, to get the truth and sell it not, and to be a doer of your word, Father God, that we are not ignorant because we lack knowledge, or that we do not pursue knowledge and ask for knowledge and wisdom and understanding, but to teach us, O oh God, how to be children of the Most High God, how to be priests and kings in Christ Jesus in this earth, Father God, that we reign in every territory that you've given to us, Father God, and we say thank you once again, we ask you to bless Israel, Father God. Bless its government, its, its leaders, Father God. And to continue, Father God, to strengthen their borders. And God, we give you thanks in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.